algo de lo que tú hablas mucho es de que los padres deben estar involucrados en el discipulado de, de sus hijos y de, en el entrenamiento de, de sus hijos. Eh, pero muchas veces la, la respuesta o más bien la pregunta que tienen los papás es, bueno, pero ¿cómo hago esto? ¿Verdad? ¿Qué, qué tipo de, de proceso puedo llevar? Eh, y creo que tú has mencionado justamente el proceso que creo que es, es muy bueno de acuerdo a la realidad de, de los niños, de los jóvenes conforme van creciendo. Así que quería pedirte si nos podías dar este, un resumen de cómo es que tú recomiendas que se haga justamente ese discipulado en, en los hijos. The most important thing we can do as parents is pass on the knowledge of the Christian faith to our kids because the knowledge of the Christian faith is true, right? It get, and it gives us knowledge of reality. It's God's take on everything. And so parents need to intentionally think about how we can do this effectively. And it's our job as soon as our kids are born and, you know, as long as they're in our home, uh, we've got to be figuring out how do we pass on the knowledge of Christianity and the knowledge of God to them. In fact, Jesus says in John 17, 3, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ whom you've sent. So even Jesus helps us to see the importance of knowledge by connecting it to our eternal life. So here's a real practical, I think, three-step process that you and I can take as parents to uh, pass on the knowledge of Christianity, to pass on theological truth, to pass on biblical truth. And so what we need to understand is that our kids, as they grow, their minds develop. And at certain stages, it's appropriate to teach them certain things. And so really, maybe from the time they start talking through elementary school, think of that as stage one, where you're going to focus on teaching the what, right? Uh, what's the what? The what is theology. It's the study of God. It's the knowledge of God. It's, it's biblical truth. And so you want to focus on what it is that we believe. And so this is where our kids need to learn. Okay, who is God? What are his attributes? Uh, learning the attributes of God and, and what those things mean. Uh, learning key scriptures like the Ten Commandments. Uh, learning catechism, which is simply taking our theology, our doctrine, the things that we affirm that are true and putting it in question answer form. And so you're teaching the what? And a lot of times at that stage, as you teach the what, you're getting kids to memorize a lot. Now, it is okay that they don't understand everything that they're memorizing. I think we need to think of our kids as this kind of container. And what we're doing is we're starting to pour all this truth in them at that stage. Mm -hmm. And, and they're, they're memorizing it. They're learning it. They may not comprehend it all. That's okay. But we're pouring it in and we're going to keep working with it. And eventually it's going to pay dividends in the long term because then in the second stage, really when they get into middle school, they get to be 11, 12, 13. What happens is their minds continue to develop. They're growing and they start to learn how to think in abstract ways, right? When they're younger, they're thinking in more concrete terms. And uh, when they're getting older, they're starting to think in concrete ways. This is why our kids at that stage start asking the why questions. And sometimes we as parents get really bugged by that, you know, mm -hmm. is why this or why that? And, and sometimes we take it personally, like they're questioning our authority. And sometimes they are. <laughs> But a lot of times what they're looking for is, is the reason now. They want to know not just the what, but they want to know the why. And so the second stage is teach the why. And so it doesn't mean you stop teaching the what, you keep teaching the what, now you're going to add the why. So here's what we believe about God. Okay, why do we believe that God even exists? And now we're giving them evidence. We're giving them reasons. First Peter 3.15 says that we are to be prepared with the reason for the hope that we put in Christ. Uh, to, we're, to, to make an apologia, right? Uh, an apologetic, which is just simply a defense of the Christian faith. And so apologetics becomes a very important part of their discipleship in those stages. And so You teach the why, the first stage. In the second stage, you're going to add now the why. And then when they get into high school, you want to teach the how to. That's stage three. And what you're trying to do there in that third stage 
is you're trying to get them now to take the what, put it together with the why, right? Take the truth, put it together with good thinking and reasoning. And then in the third stage of teaching how to, you want to, you want to get them to articulate this. Can, can they actually explain it? Can they, can they talk about it? Can they share that truth with others? And what that indicates to you is how well they've actually internalized it. Mm-hmm. You know, when they can reason through it and articulate it, it helps you to see, oh, they, okay, they've, they're starting to take ownership of this. It's not just, I believe this because mom and dad told me. No, but I believe that God exists because there's powerful evidence in the natural world. Uh, if there is a beginning to the universe, there had to be a beginner. If there's design in the universe, that points to a designer. If there are moral laws in this universe, it, it points to a moral law giver, right? And, and now they have their own reasons and they're able to articulate it and, and share that with others. And that stage is so important. And, and what we have to do at that stage is we have to often get them out of the classroom, so to speak, get them out from behind the four walls of the church. And we have to get them in situations where now they have to engage the world and they have to engage non-believers. Uh, they have to talk about it. And so maybe we take them along with us as we do that. And they need to see this lived out. And, uh, and, and when you do that, you'll really help your kids come to know the truth of Christianity. And in that third stage that, you know, getting them into the, in, into the world and engaging the world, that's going to help them see, number one, maybe they don't know things as well as they thought they did. Because you don't really know how well you know something until you're challenged mm-hmm. and you have to respond. And then secondly, it's, it, it, it often can motivate kids. It can motivate kids because they see, oh, I don't know this as much as I thought I did. And maybe it even surfaces some of their own doubts. And then that can be motivation to go back and, and study even more. And so I think that's a very practical three-stage process that parents can take. And you begin you know, when they're just, uh, you know, just speaking and then you, you, you have a, a process that lasts all the time that they're in your home. 